Hello, hello, hello. You are welcome again to CCMD Podcast. My name is Delia Kone, and um, I'm the pastor of the church. Uh, this podcast is coming to you from Christ Chapel, Maryland, and we're situated in on Temple Hills, precisely 3214 Brinkley Road. And I want to express my gratitude for you being a part of the podcast for, for a while. Thank you for joining us. Uh, whatever forum you're joining us, we are on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Spotify, and we're still going to be on all other forums. So I just want to say thank you very much for being a part of it. Uh, don't forget to help us to share. We want many more people to be a part of this good thing that is happening in our midst. And um, my prayer is that the Lord will reward you adequately in the name of Jesus. Uh, like we said from the very beginning, you're going to learn a lot on this um, forum in Christ Chapel. We want to be able to uh, showcase Christianity in every part of life uh, because that is exactly what God has in mind. Uh, as far as God is concerned, there shouldn't be a divide between Christianity and another part of life. As a matter of fact, Christianity should be an integral part of human existence. And that's one of the things we want to achieve through the uh, CCMD podcast. So you are welcome in the name of Jesus. If you are a member of Christ Chapel, I'm very proud of you. If you're not a member, uh, we're also proud of you. And we'd we'll love one day for you to visit us in our church. Uh, by the end of this, uh, show sure, we'll be able to sh tell you where to come to. All right, uh, today I want to start on a series which is going to be on marriage. Marriage is very important. As a matter of fact, uh, marriage is key, is central to human existence. And that's the thing we're going to look at uh, throughout this, uh, I won't say this month, but as long as we are able to handle those topic. So I want you to stay tuned with us. Uh, we're going to be looking at young and new marriages. And uh, we're going to look at how to prepare for marriage. We're going to look at post-counseling marriage or post-marriage counseling as, as, as it were. Then we're going to look at the strength of a marriage. What should make a marriage to be strong? I want to look at those things. I want to look at the components. I want to look at the constituents of a strong marriage. And if your marriage is strong, I want to see how can you make it even more stronger. Uh, those are the topics we're going to be looking at in the future. And then we're also going to look at the survivability of a marriage. What makes a marriage survive? You see, if you look at statistics, it's very interesting. Uh, I was looking at statistics the other day. And uh, found out that marriages that are 20 years, 30 years and above are really going to divorce. I mean, years back, when a marriage is 30 years, I mean, you're almost certain that that marriage will survive. But um, in the present time, it's not the case anymore. So we want to look at what are the telltales to watch out for the survivability of a marriage. Are there any leakages? And if there are leakages in those marriages, what should we do to patch up those leakages in the marriage? Then we're going to jump all the way to trials that all marriages face. Trials that all marriages fail. We want to see how can we be prepared for those trials and how can we handle them? And most importantly, is it possible for us to turn those trials into triumphs for our marriages? We're going to be looking at that also. And many more. And one of the things we're going to be doing that I want uh, to inform you is that we're going to bring in a lot of guests from different walks of life to help us in handling this all-important uh, topic from all walks of life. It's not going to be Christians alone. And we're going to bring people from all walks of life because we can learn from one another. And the objective is this is to add to what you know. Now, I want you to understand that very well. Yeah? The objective is to make to add to what you know about marriage and probably to furnish you about what you don't know, but you should know. 
So that's why I'm so confident that these particular, I don't want to call it series, maybe sessions will be of great importance to you. So of course, we would love to hear from you. We would love to learn from you also. So you, you can uh, engage us in the chat box, on Facebook, on the YouTube, uh, Spotify. Engage us in the chat box. And I promise we will respond to you. And as well, uh, you can call, you can text on 301-325-3684. The number is going to be on the screen. Or you can write us an email, info at christchapelmd.org. We will get back to you so that we can all add uh, great stuff to this all-important topic. All right, for today, I'm going to call it the Primitive Foundation. I want to talk about the concept of marriage itself. And among many other things, I'm going to talk about five things. The concept of marriage. Like I said, I would love uh, you to engage in this discussion. I want to hear from you, uh, your questions, your comments, your observations. And even if you have a disagreement, just let us know. And we will respond back to you adequately. And we will let the audience also know about it. So, but let's dig into this. The concept of marriage. I'm just going to make general statements as just a preliminary foundation for what we have in the offing uh, for the next uh, few sessions we're going to have. Uh, the first thing I want to share with you about marriage is the, the concept of marriage is that marriage in actual fact is a source. Of course, we know God is the initiator of marriage. It's not the society that starts marriage. It's not the government. It's not any culture. It's not any practice or tradition. It's not any religion whatsoever. It's God that started marriage. So it's the source. When I say source, what do I mean? Source means the very point where something can be obtained, the very point where something can be gotten from, the very point where something emanates from. Marriage is where, as it were, life, let me put in quote, life takes its source. From marriage, you, of course, God is doing marriage primarily for procreation. And that's why we, is the source of population. It's a source of uh, increase in the number of a society, number of a family, number of a community, of a race. Marriage is that important. Marriage is that essential to human beings. Without marriage, there cannot be procreation. I know some people argue, but how about artificial insemination and all those stuff? Well, I get that. But at the same time, you can't compare that to marriage. The input of marriage to population, to procreation, cannot be uh, undervalued. So it's very important. We need to understand this concept. The reason why God instituted the original reason is for procreation. At the same time, also marriage is the source of growth. In all aspects you can think of, it's the source of growth. Now, I read some times ago, the United States of America, uh, they even advise strongly, very strong, this is governmental advice, that a couple grows better, grows faster when resources are pulled together. I mean, that's United States government. This is quite a while ago. But it's the source of growth in every respect of humanity, in every respect of, uh, of, of human life, human existence. Marriage fosters growth. It is out of marriage you grow emotionally, you grow uh, spiritually, you grow in all respect, in all ramifications. You see, before I got married, I love, I love exercise, uh, but you find out that when you get married, you can even increase when your partner is part of it. Your exercise regimen, your exercise life becomes richer, becomes more, more boisterous. So growth also stems from marriage. And also, uh, marriage is the source of happiness. I know some people might scoff at that. But we're just talking about the concept of marriage itself. It's the source of happiness. It is through marriage that you pursue happiness. You know, anytime I do marriage counseling for, uh, uh, for new or younger uh, couples, this is what I tell I mean, this is the very first step I try to uh, teach them to that marriage is basically the pursuit of happiness for both of you and even for each of you. And that's why uh, marriage is internal. 
not external. You can base your marriage on external things, uh, such as um, uh, uh, acquisition, cars, houses, and, and what have you, lots of money. Oh, no, all those things don't bring happiness. But when both of you understand this concept of marriage, it's where happiness comes from. You can have all the cars, you know, you can have all the companies in the world, but what happens in the home, that's much, much more important. Praise the Lord. So the second thing I want to talk about marriage, the concept of marriage, that marriage is not so complicated as we have made it to be. It shouldn't be, that's what I mean. Marriage is not as complicated as it ought to be. And a helpful factor is understanding that marriage is evenly uh, ruled. Marriage is evenly rule-based. If we understand that, look, when I go into marriage, I'm going there to play a role. My partner is coming there to play a role. Then our offspring, they are coming into this marriage to play a role. It will really help us. So it's, uh, it's marriage becomes complicated when you begin to look at your partner's role and beginning to analyze your partner's role rather than focusing on your own role. So I want you to understand this concept, concept very well. Marriage ought not to be as complicated as we have made it to be. It should not be. Now, I want to talk to you. If you're listening and your marriage is complicated as it were, what I want you to do is un just understand this. It's role-based. I bring my own input. My partner brings his or her own input. And the offspring, the result of our relationship, of our union, they also bring their own input into it. Marriage is that simple. Marriage is that straightforward. The moment we begin to look at other people's role, begin to analyze it, instead of you know, uh, 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 looking at your own particular role and making sure that you perform your own role, then marriage becomes complicated. So this is also important in understanding the concept of marriage. Another thing you need to understand in the concept of marriage is this, and this is very important, is that marriage is not a one-size-fits-all. It's not a one-size-fits-all. I know there are tons of books about marriage, and I'm telling you, I'm also trying, I'm writing one as it were right now, and there are tons of marriage counselors all over the place. There are Christian counselors, Muslim counselors, uh, secular counselors, counselors of all sorts, hybrid counselors, <laughs> name it. I even heard somebody, some people are forensic counselor, whatever that means. But there are all of these resources, all of these self-helps, and they are not bad. But then, Still, they are not sufficient for any marriage. So marriage is not a one-size-fits-all. Uh, in my counseling, I tried as much as possible to dispel these this presumptions among partners because a lot of them come with a lot of perceptions into the marriage. For example, I tried to tell them that uh, one of the things that is so fluid that evolves real quick in any marriage relationship is expectations expectations evolve. As a matter of fact, from the very moment both of you mortal the word I do, then the expectation begins to evolve. It begins to evolve from time to time. You see, um, the husband may get a new job, expectation changes. The wife may have a child, the expectation changes. So marriage is not a one size fits all. And so I try to let couples know that the element of uh, th that particular element of expedition marriage is a great dynamics that they need to work upon. And also, a, a lot of people come with the notion that uh, their marriages ought to be like that of their parents. Uh, this is a very, very, um, I won't say a dangerous thing, but it's not helpful. It might not be helpful to your marriage, you know. Particularly, you see, what evolves your marriage may not happen in your parents' marriage. So there's no book, there's no counseling session that can be sufficient. Marriage is unique 
is as unique as a person's uh, hand, uh, hand uh, what do you call it, handprint. Is as unique as your handprint. And that's why marriage, I won't say it's a, it's a mis mysterious thing, but it's an exciting part of human life. It's an exciting part of and everybody must look forward to, a, to marriage. Everybody must desire to be a married man, to be a married woman. It's unique to that person. It's the two of you that's going to work it out. So two factors that are involved typically in marriage is notion. A lot of people come with notion. Like I said, they come with a presumption. This is how it's supposed to be from what I read in the book, from what I watch in the movies, uh, from what I have experienced with my parents, from what I saw, you know, I stay with my uncle, I stay with my aunt, and I know how the marriage works. It's, it's, uh, it's rosy, it's hunky dory you know. Uh, some, it's maybe the associates, well, all, I have five friends in school, and uh, all the five of them, uh, this is how their marriage is. Or maybe the neighbor, our neighbor, I mean, they look so nice. Each time I peek out of the window, when I see them, the way they raise their kids. So people come with those notions from experiences. And good as it were, it might not be sufficient for you to build up a marriage. So that's what I'm talking The other thing is the environment. Environment is another factor that can affect marriage. So it's not a one size fits all. For example, uh, I, I'm an immigrant to the United States of America uh, and I come to the Western world. I live in America. You know, and there are many people like that. You know, they um, migrate from where they are, from one culture to the other. Uh, some move from, uh, from, from West to uh, to African, some move from, from Asian to uh, Australian, and I mean, from one culture to the other. And that environment can shape on the marriage. For example, let's take, for example, in uh, India, for example, I mean, they have a highly cultural set of people, or even the Muslims and highly set cultural people. And then when they come to the United States of America, where, uh, particularly when they live in a Libra environment, that can shape on the marriage. In our community, in the African community, you know, it's uh, it's almost unheard of that you have an argument with your partner, with your husband, or with your wife, and the next thing you do is pick up the telephone and call the cops. It's almost unheard of. I mean, if that happens uh, in a culture like this, you wonder what's going on, what's happening here. So my point is this: environment also can shape on the marriage. So it's not a one size fits all. I remember the story I've heard of um, Billy Graham's wife. I believe she's um, Ruth Graham. I hope I'm right about that. But the story I heard was that a reporter asked her, he said, uh, Miss Graham, he said, yeah. So have you ever considered a divorce? Have you ever considered divorcing Billy Graham? Oh, and then she said, no, 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 never. It can't, that can never happen. And that's because they lived in the environment of Christianity, you know, their position in Christianity, in the society. They said, no, that cannot happen. He said, but if you ask me if I've ever thought of grabbing his neck, strangling him and killing him, he said, oh, many times. So the environment can also affect the marriage. That's why marriage is so unique. I mean, look at the case of the Grahams. I mean, the wife knew she was being called into ministry. She understands the demand of the ministry. But at the same time, what the ministry was doing to her, she didn't like it. You know, causes loneliness, causing uh, separation. And that can be aggravating at times. But because of Christ in her life, she was able to handle it. So that's why I'm saying that marriage is not a one-size-fits-all. It's unique to you and your partner. And that is a concept you need to understand. Then the next thing I would like to talk about is that marriage is a friendship builder. Oh, yes, you, you heard me right. It's the best friendship builder. If you use your marriage as a tool to build friendship, trust me, you will enjoy the best relationship you can ever have in this world. Now, aside from a uh, relationship between you and God, the next best friendship, best relationship you can ever have is either with your wife or with your husband. So marriage, God 
used it as a friendship. As a matter of fact, if you look at the story of creation in the book of Genesis, God used the concept of marriage to fix the loneliness of human beings. Think about that. So marriage in essential is a solution to fixing the loneliness in the life of Adam. So what God intends to be is that through marriage, both of you will form fresh. So let, let's just assume that, let's just assume that everybody, every marriage in the world, over 7 billion people, every single marriage, irrespective of culture, irrespective of race, irrespective of region, every marriage is very, very, very good. Now imagine how wonderful this world will be. There'll be no tension, there'll be no stress, there'll be no anxiety, there'll be no worry. I guarantee you that. So marriage is a friendship builder. You want to build friendship? It's the best way. You know, it's the God's solution to fixing human beings' loneliness. You know, I've heard some people, you know, having their party, or they say, my BFF, my best friend forever, is my high school mate. No, your partner in marriage ought to be your best friend forever because marriage is the best friendship builder. It's not high school. It's not the club. It's not the society you believe. It's not even your business uh, uh, association, associates rather. It's marriage should be the best build, friendship, friendship builder. Your BFF ought to be your wife or your husband. Now I'm proud to say that my wife, Oluwatoyi, is my best friend forever. That's what God has called us to be. That does that mean that both of you won't have differences? As a matter of fact, you're going to have a lot of differences. I was watching a TV show sometimes, you know, I think it was opera, I can't remember exactly. One of these popular talk shows. And they brought a very old couple. One was 90 year old, the lady was 89, I believe. And I mean, it was so so wonderful. And he asked them, oh, can you tell us what is the secret behind your marriage? Because they've been married for almost 70 something years. Um, both of them said, well, uh, the secret is this. We know how to manage our differences. We know how to manage, we, we quarrel a lot. As a matter of fact, before they left the set that same day, both of them quarrel out of the set. So that doesn't mean you won't have differences. But your differences is what strengthen your relationship, strengthen your friendship. So uh, friendship, marriage is a friendship builder. The last thing I'm going to talk to you about is that marriage is not immune to common everyday life issues. Don't let anybody deceive you. As a matter of fact, I'm going to say this. Marriage kind of attract those things into your life. Marriage even exposes you more to life challenges, to life troubles, to life issues, to life burdens. Marriage explains. But so before you uh, uh, get disappointed, before you disagree with me, <laughs> you know, I, I, I want you to understand that these happen so that your relationship, your union, your friendship will be stronger, will be richer, will be more enjoyable, will be friendlier. This concept must be understood. Now, I've seen a lot of people say, oh, I'm not going to go into marriage because I can see what people are going through. Oh, look at the trouble they're going through. Look at the challenges that befalls them. You know, look at the, uh, 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 all, all, all the responsibilities they have to take. Oh, yes, marriage exposes you to all of them. Marriage, as a matter of fact, marriage will bring tons of them on a daily basis. May go out in the morning, happy, come back with loads of burden. So, but all of those things, they are not meant to crush you. They are meant, not meant to destroy you. They are not meant to put into to, to, in a distraught uh, situation. No, but they are meant or they are allowed in your life, and I use that word, to strengthen that relationship, to make your friendship to be richer so that you guys will enjoy one another even more. I mean, think about it. When both of you have the challenges and then you're able to solve it, guess what is going to happen? You're going to celebrate together. It makes celebration to be sweeter than the challenges you go through. 
Thank you for listening. You know, today I just want to lay primary foundation that the concept of marriage is a beneficial thing. Marriage ought not to be something anybody will avoid. Now, I would like to just address the young ones if you are listening to me right now. Marriage is the best thing that can happen to you in this world. Trust me. No, irrespective of what people have said, irrespective of what you have read, what you have seen, what you have watched, marriage is still the best thing that can happen to you. That's how God intends it to be. That's how God wants it to be. And I'm not talking about Christian marriage only. I'm talking about marriage in all respect. Marriage in all culture. Marriage at every level. At any age, you find yourself. It's beneficial to you. I trust the Lord that you have been blessed. And as I said, you know, I would love to hear from you. I, have to, I would love to learn from you. Uh, we, we're, we're going to be back in the next two weeks by the special grace of the Lord. And thank you for listening. Please help us to share these on your social media platform. Uh, like I so said, we're on YouTube, we're on Facebook, we're on Spotify. And I believe very, very soon we're going to be in all other places where you can listen to us, in SoundCloud, uh, in Apple. We want you to stay tuned. And um, if you happen to be around the DMV area, like I always say, our church, Christ Chapel, a branch of Redeemed Christian of God, we're not too far from you. Oh, yes, we're not too far from you. Just give us a try. Our address will be on the screen. It's 3214 Brinkley Road, Temple Hills. We hold our services on Sundays, 9.30 a.m. We also have a live stream. If you can come, you can join us. On Wednesday, we have a Bible study. All our services are live streamed. And if you subscribe to us, we'll be able to reach out to you when any of our services or our church activities will be ongoing. So the Lord bless you, the Lord keep you. And if you're married, my prayer is that the Lord will continue to add new wine into your marriage. If you are considering marriage and you, are, you think you are prepared, you are ready for marriage, this is a podcast you cannot miss. Next week, we're going to talk to young and new ones. I mean, in the next two weeks, I'm sorry. We're going to talk to the young and new ones about marriage. Have a lovely and wonderful time. And God bless you. Bye.